You know, when you're, you're trying to suspect someone, even like an investigation, you say, what's the motive? Right? Like, what's in it for him? You know, <laughs> there was uh, once uh, a pair of twins, identical twins, that we gave Shahada to in New York City, a friend of mine, he was talking to them. And after the event, we had like a guest speaker, and mashallah, like seven, eight people became Muslim in that event. And two of them were twins, twin brothers. So they became Muslim, they went home. And the next day, they call up my friend Hisham, who gave them their Shahada. And they're like, listen, man, we, we, we we feel like we rushed into it. It's like, what do you mean you rushed into it? I said, yeah, we, we feel like, you know, it's just like the moment and the, you know, the hoorah and everyone's like, we and stuff. And we feel like it was sort of like we got duped, we got tricked into it. He says, you got tricked? They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, we need more time. We felt like we were sort of like, you know, a fast one was pulled on us. So he said, oh, okay. So just let me know. We can meet up and I'll give you your money back. He's like, what? He's like, your money, the money you paid that we tricked you to pay to become Muslim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he's like, but we didn't pay any money. He's like, then how did we trick you? Like, what did we get out of you becoming Muslim? What's our motive? Like, he's trying to tell him, are we not sincere? And then he's like, I'm not sure. Like, how did we trick you? I'm not sure. He said, let me tell you exactly what happened. He tells the brothers now, he says, listen, when you became Muslim, Shaitan had a panic attack. Because his whole life work on you didn't just get erased, but got turned into good deeds, right? And so he's just blitzing you right now. He just take it easy, one day at a time. We'll work through this. It was very smart the way he approached it. Uh, but that's the idea. Like, what is the motive of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What did he get out of it? Like, by the end of his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, come on, guys, you're supposed to get in at least like 3,000 Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the time my segment is over today. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You win. You know, he said, whoever sends one salah upon me, Allah sends ten upon them, right? So you're the winners here. At the end of his life, he is the undisputed ruler of all of Arabia. That means everyone would have done anything to please him. Okay? That means he did something that hadn't happened in 2,000 years. Since the time of Ismail alayhi salam or Ibrahim alayhi salam. What did he use that for? How did he, you know, uh, capitalize on these worldly gains? His simplicity at the end of his life was exactly like the simplicity at the beginning of his life. You know how they say that money doesn't change people? It. Come on, guys. You don't know what Instagram is? There's memes out there that teach us how to understand the world. Money reveals you. doesn't change you. That's not necessarily true, by the way, but it sounds nice. When here, it's a good thought to think about. Many times, if you are in it for something, the moment that something presents itself, you start salivating, right? You start chasing. You start falling all over yourself or all over it. And so at the end of his life, perfect simplicity, like the beginning of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the end of his life, he was still going hungry because he insisted to share his food with everyone, make sure everybody was eating. At the end of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would still bend his wife's legs to make sujood in his apartment, right? He would tap her leg and, she would, and then he would prostrate. That was the tightness of his room, or at least that area in his room. You know that famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he enters the Prophet's room, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he sees the little, like the water skin in the corner, simple leather sewed up for some water. He sees like a, what's in the cupboard or what's not in the cupboard, but like nothing there. And, and then he saw the straw mats, you know, the straw mats when you put your hand on them, they leave a mark. He saw the straw mat having left marks on his side. He saw how hungry he was. And so he began to cry. Umar began to cry out of sympathy for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said to him, why are you crying out? He said to him, you know, the, the kings of Rome and Persia and Abyssinia, and these kings, you know, they enjoy such luxury, such extravagance. He's trying to tell him you're a king. Like, you are king right now. So how come you go through this when you're more than a king? You're the, like, God's representative on earth. You are the agent of God. You're the messenger of Allah. And so the Prophet wasallam said to him, Ibn Khattab, are you in doubt about it, O Umar? Do you doubt Allah's promise? Notice, it's about certainty. There's no doubt about it, right? That he was certain, He said, are you in doubt, O Umar? 
what does it bother you that for them is this world and for us is the hereafter? He said to him, these are a people their pleasures, their shallow pleasures, the materialistic stuff, they have been expedited to them in this world, the, the shallow materialistic pleasures. For us is the hereafter. <laughs> 